Exodus 5. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, This is what Adonai, God of Israel, says. Let my people go so they may hold a feast for me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is Adonai that I should listen to his voice and let Israel go? I do not know Adonai, and besides, I will not let Israel go. They answered, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness so that we may, we may sacrifice Adonai to our God, or else he may strike us with a pestilence or with his sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Why do you, Moses and Aaron, make the people break loose from their work? Go to your labors. Then Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are now so numerous, yet you would have them rest for them their labors? Then on the same day, Pharaoh commanded the slave masters of the people and their foremen, saying, You are not to give the people any more straw to make bricks as before. Let them go and gather the straw for themselves, but impose on them the quota of the bricks that they made previously. Don't reduce it, for if they are lazy, that's why they cry out to saying let us go sacrifice to our god let even heavier work be laid upon the men so that what they must labor paying no attention to deceptive words and the slave masters of the people went out along with their officers and they spoke to the people saying this is what pharaoh says i will not give you straw go and get straw for yourselves wherever you can find it for there will be no reduction of your work so there so the people were scattered throughout all the land of egypt to gather stubble for straw but the slave master's pressure is saying, Fulfill your work, your daily amount, just as when there was straw. Moreover, the foreman of Benai Israel, whom a Pharaoh's slave master should sit over them, were beaten and asked, Why haven't you met your cone of bricks, both yesterday and today, like before? The foreman of Benai Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why do you deal this way with your servants? No straw is given to your servants. Yet they say to us, Make bricks, and look, your servants are beaten, but it's your own people at fault. But he said, lazy, you're lazy. That's why you were saying, let us go and sacrifice to Adonai. So now, and work, no straw will be given to you, but you must deliver the quota of bricks. So the foreman of Benai Israel saw that they were in trouble when they were told, you were not to reduce the number of bricks from day to day. And they met Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them as they came from Pharaoh. Just so they said to them, may Adonai look on you and judge, because you have made us a stench in the eye of Pharaoh and in their eyes of his servants, putting his sword in their hand to kill us. So Moses returned to Adonai and said, Adonai, why have you brought evil on these people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought evil on these people. You have not delivered your people at all. Exodus 6. Adonai said to Moses, Now you will see what I am going to do, Pharaoh. By way of a strong hand, he will let them go and drive them out of his hand. God spoke further to Moses and said to him, I am Adonai. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai. Yet by my name, Adonai, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their privilege, pilgrimage, where they journeyed furthermore. I have heard the groaning of Benai Israel, whom the Egyptians are keeping in bondage. So I have remembered my covenant. Therefore, I say to Benai Israel, I am Adonai, and I will bring you out of under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm, and with great judgment I will be your God. You will know that I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and I give it to you as an inheritance. I am your Adonai. I am Adonai. Moses spoke this way to Benai Israel, but they did not listen to him because of their broken spirit and cruel bondage. So Adonai told Moses, Go speak to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so that he will let Benai Israel go out of his hand. Land. But Moses said to Adonai, Benai Israel, I have, have not listened to me. So how would Pharaoh listen to me, I who have uncircumcised lips? Then Adonai spoke to Moses and to Aaron and gave them a charge for Benai Israel and Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring Benai Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their father's houses. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanak, Palau, Hezron, and Carmi. These are the families of Reuben. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Joshin, Zohar, Shaul, the sons of the Canaanite woman. These are the families of Simeon. These are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generations. Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Levi lived 137 years. The sons of Gershon were Libni and Shemuel, or Shemai, according to their families. The sons of Kohath were Amran, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. Kohath lived 133 years. The sons of Merari were Mehil and Mushi. These are the families of the Levites, according to their generations. Amran married uh, Jochebed, his father's sister, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. Amran lived 137 years. 
the sons of Ishar were Korah, Nepheg, and Zikri. The sons of Uziel were Mishael, Elzaphan, and Sithri. Aaron married Elishaba, daughter of Aminadav, sister of Nashan, and she bore him Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. The sons of Korah were Asir, Elkanash, and Abiasaph. These are the families of the Korahites. Eleazar, Aaron's son, married one of the daughters of Putiel, and she bore him Phinehas. Or Phinehas. These are the heads of the ancestral houses of the Levites, according to their families. These are the same, Aaron and Moses, to whom Adonai bring Benai Israel out from the land of Egypt, according to their divisions. These are the ones that spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring Benai Israel out from Egypt. These are the same, Moses and Aaron. So it happened that the day when Adonai spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, that Adonai said to Moses, I am Adonai. Tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, everything that I tell you. But Moses said to Adonai, I am of uncircumcised lips, so how would Pharaoh listen to me? Exodus 7. So Adonai said to Moses, See, I have set you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron your brother will be your prophet. You are to speak all that I command you, and Aaron your brother is to speak to Pharaoh, so that he will let Benai Israel go out of his hand. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not listen to you, so I will lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies, my people Benai Israel, out of this land of Egypt by great judgments. The Egyptians will know that I am mad and I when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out Benai Israel from among them. So Moses and Aaron did as Adonai commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 years old when they spoke to Pharaoh. Adonai told Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh spoke to you saying, prove yourselves with a miracle, then you are to say to Aaron, take your staff and cast it down before Pharaoh so that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went in prayer into Pharaoh, as Adonai had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they too, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts. For each man threw down his staff, and they became serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs, yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, so he did not listen to them, just as Adonai had said. Ten plagues begin. Blood. Then Adonai said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He refuses to let his people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. He is coming out to the water and stand ready to meet him by the bank of the Nile. Take the staff that was transformed into a serpent in your hand. You are to say to him, Adonai, God of the Hebrews, has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, so they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, you have not listened. This is what Adonai says. By this you will know that I am Adonai. Behold, I will strike the waters that are in the river with the staff that is in my hand, and they will be turned to blood. The fists that are in the river will die. The river will become foul, and the Egyptians will hate to drink water from the Nile. Adonai said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Take your staff, and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the rivers, over their streams, over their pools, and over their ponds, so that they will become blood. There will be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in the wood and and stone containers. So Moses did, and Aaron commanded. He lifted up the staff and struck waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants. And all the waters of the Nile turned to blood. When the fish that were in the river died, the river came so became so foul that the Egyptians could not drink water from the river. The blood was throughout all the land of Egypt, but the magicians of Egypt did the same with their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart hardened, and he did not listen to them. Just as Adonai had said, Pharaoh turned and went to his house and did not even take it to his heart. So all the Egyptians dug around the river for the water to drink because they could not drink the water from the Nile. Seven days were fulfilled after Adonai had struck the Nile. Then Adonai said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what Adonai says. Let my people go so that they may serve me. If you refuse to let them go, see, I will strike all over your territory with frogs. The river will, sw- river will swarm with frogs. They will go up and into your house, into your bedroom, upon your bed, into the houses of your servants, upon the people, into your ovens. And in your kneading bowls, the frogs will climb up on you and the people and all your servants.